After the recent changes to shot dispersion on so many weapons which you can find all about here, I can finally tell you what the top 30 weapons in Enlisted truly are. And in order, from a purely statistical point of view, I've done so many videos reviewing the top 20 in different weapon classes, but this video merges them all together and adds 10 because otherwise some massive ones would miss out and you guys would probably complain in the comments. I considered all gold weapons, premium squads, event weapons, literally everything that can shoot bullets. All the stats have been sourced from the in-game descriptions or from Euthemia's public resource statistics like shot dispersion, aim down sight speed and actual versus observed recoil, which is just what the game claims recoil is and what it actually is. It's a really dumb stat, I know. Hey yo, what the f do remember though that some weapons change their stats between campaigns, like the Breda MG and the AVT-40, and I've tried to account for this where possible, even though weapon stats will be equal in the coming major updates when campaigns merge. And I should finally say that just because a weapon isn't in my top 30, does not mean that it's a bad weapon. The beauty of this game is that all weapons have excellent killing power, it's just that it's not possible for every single weapon in the game to make a top 30 list. But now starting with number 30, it's the SIG-19. 30. Now surely you're surprised that a Japanese used Pacific Axis weapon has made it onto the top 30. But if you watch my Twitch streams where we play competitive and fun battles with you all, then you'll know how much I enjoy this thing. With a whopping 50 rounds per magazine and supremely low horizontal recoil at 7, which in fact is only 2.8 if you look at the actual recoil in the game files, which is like nothing, this thing turns into an absolute laser. This is not even to mention its bayonet, which is super underrated, so you can one hit kill enemies in melee combat, but bayonets also secretly reduce a weapon's recoil by 5%, so the recoil for this weapon is even lower. All these things compound to show that the SIG's horizontal recoil is about a third of that of the Type 2 ASMG, which you would have not have guessed if not for the game files. And remember, horizontal recoil is significantly more important than vertical recoil to reduce, as vertical is easily countered by dragging your mouse down, but horizontal cannot be reduced by this method nearly as easily. In 29th is the m 1928 a1 Thompson with drum magazine, currently only available in the Tunisia Allies campaign. Another 50 round drum magazine but with lower vertical recoil than the SIG in both the official stats and hidden actual recoil. And significantly higher rate of fire and reload speed, this thing only doesn't score higher on this list because of high horizontal recoil, which as we said, makes it difficult to control. It might have higher damage but it does have very high shot dispersion as well, higher than the SIG by a non-negligible amount. 28th sees the MKB42H, and it's another one of these you'd be forgiven for wondering why it's even so low on this list, especially considering how desired it is amongst the player base in our massive enlisted discord server. Psst. You can join the discussion over there, link in the description. There is one big reason why the MKB is in 28th, it's fire rate. 500 rounds per minute isn't really that high and you will lose out in close quarter combat to many of the others above it on this list, but what it excels in is mid-range combat, as it's an assault rifle which does more damage at 100 meters than any of the ones we've looked at so far. Two bullets with this thing is at least an instant down, often an instant kill, even at 100 meters, combined with low reload speeds and recoil. So it is actually a very good weapon still. 27th contains the Soviet PPD-3438 Extended Mag. Now you must also be thinking, why does this super low level weapon make it above the MKB? There are multiple reasons why. Firstly, its mag size of 71 is insane. Its fire rate is almost double that of the MKB, whilst also having lower vertical recoil. Sure, its horizontal recoil is higher, especially when taken into account with the hidden higher recoil direction stats, and its damage is lower, but realistically its pros more than counteract its cons, just don't trust it to be amazing at mid-range combat. But that's not to say it's bad at it. In 26th, we see the subscribe button. No seriously, you should click it, because how else will you be notified when I release videos on the best 20 weapons for each weapon class in 2023? But actually, 26th sees the first gold weapon on this list, the Soviet PP Spitalny 1940. In all honesty, it's supremely similar to the PPD 3438, but with some important additions. A higher magazine size of 97, higher damage, lower recoil and lower shot dispersion are all more important than the slightly lower rate of fire. But that's not to say 800 shots per minute is slow by any means, it's above the sweet spot of 750 shots per minute. You do need to be aware though that this weapon applies a minus 20% movement speed nerf when holding it, which could affect your decision on whether to buy this thing. 25th contains the premium squad belt fed DP machine gun, the first MG on this list in the Berlin Allies campaign. Machine guns now excel because of their recent shot dispersion reduction across the board 
attack, but also because of their base damage. 13.2, which is always enough to one hit down or kill an enemy that doesn't have the 35% vitality soldier perk. Remembering that every soldier has essentially 10 points of health and 35% extra makes it 13.5 health. Machine guns, on the whole, however, tend to suffer from significantly higher horizontal recoil than other weapons, and from a 50% movement speed nerf when holding. And this machine gun is no exception, but it's a 100 round magazine that is reloaded in just 3.2 seconds, better than many SMGs on this list, is insane. If you can get used to this thing's recoil, you'll realize this MG is an absolute beast. In 24th is the MP717R, the designation for the German stolen equivalent of the Soviet PPSH, which you'll see on this list uh, much later. Stay tuned. <laughs> It's fantastic in its own right. A super high rate of fire, low reload speed, very low recoil, good damage, all without any movement speed nerfs. But just be sure to give any soldier holding this, or any other equivalent of a PPSH, a large ammo pouch backpack, as just two full mags will disappear quicker than your own team will flame you after you lose a point. You have no... 23rd contains the Soviet PPD-40, available in Berlin and Moscow, a weapon very, very similar to the MP717R but with a few extra benefits, a higher rate of fire, lower shot dispersion, and lower recoil direction, which feeds into the recoil stat itself, all for the cost of ever so slightly higher horizontal recoil, which, let's be real, you won't notice at all. Next up in 22nd is another very, very similar weapon, but it's a gold weapon this time, and it has a silencer. It's the PPD Bramit, available in Stalingrad and Berlin for the Soviets. The reasons it's above the PPD-40 include significantly lower shot dispersion and 10% higher aim down sight speed, or ADS speed as we'll call it going forwards, which matters a lot more than a tiny weenie bit extra damage that the non-silenced version has. Also, it has a cool firing sound, so there's that, even if it's not a statistical reason why it's above the PPD-40. Into 21st we go with a premium squad weapon that you actually can't get anymore, or at least not right now, it may come back to the store at some point in the future. It's the PPD-40 DSZ. It's a Far Eastern equivalent of the PPD-40, and is once again very similar, but has significantly less recoil, both vertical and horizontal, significantly less shot dispersion, but crucially, it has a bayonet, which not only is excellent for melee PvP, but also for reducing recoil even further. And it means you can charge with it. And in addition to all of that, it also has slightly higher base damage. Honestly, I know I'm getting this thing when it comes back into the store on one of these unique sales, because it's just so unique. And so good. 20th, wow, we're down a third of it already. As we see the unique to the Stalingrad campaign currently, Swomi KP-31. In short, it's just a better version of all the PPD-40s. Plus, it looks awesome and has another unique firing sound. It's a little bit quicker to fire, has a little bit lower recoil, has a little bit lower shot dispersion, has a little bit quicker ADS speed, and is a lot quicker to reload. And this excludes how awesome your dudes look on the battlefield with this premium squad anyway. I mean, come on, you want this drip. I know you do. 19th, we're in the top 20 now with the FG42. Now this one will be controversial. An FG42 not in the top 10. Blasphemy, says all the wearaboos. But it's kind of just fact. It's a great weapon, don't get me wrong, it's just not amazing. With 14.4 base damage, it one hit downs or kills every enemy at close range, regardless of whether they have the Vitality Soldier perk. And with full auto mode, this thing can be ridiculously good in close quarters. But it loses points mostly because of its very high recoil, which strangely enough, it's actually the same for the first time across shown and actual recoil. So you can actually trust Dark Flow's recoil number for once. Who would have thought? It also though has almost no ammo at all, which is a major problem if you don't have an engineer's ammo box handy. Just 60 rounds will go a lot quicker than you think it will. In 18th, and the second assault rifle on this list, it's the German MP43-1. It has the same very high damage stats and performs as well at mid-range like the MKB did in 28th on this list, however has significantly higher fire rate, lower shot dispersion, lower recoil direction, and lower recoil proper. It's a very, very, very good weapon for both short and mid-range combat. I'm hard pressed to find the downside to this thing, to be honest, and we're only in 18th. <laughs>
In 17th though is the first Soviet assault rifle that we've seen in this list so far, the AS-44 Model 4, a premium squad in Berlin. This thing is famed amongst the community for having virtually no recoil and shot dispersion whatsoever. And it's grounded in fact. It has the joint lowest actual horizontal recoil out of every SMG in the entire game, and its vertical is also super low. Its shot dispersion is ridiculously low as well at 0.43, but not only this, it's also quicker to fire and has the same high damage at short and mid range as the MP43-1 did. For me personally though, its reload time of 3 seconds feels rather long, as you seem to spend a lot of time reloading it relative to shooting, so that is to bear in mind. 16th has another assault rifle, the mighty German trophy STG-44. Now honestly, you could place the AS-44, which we just spoke about, above this STG, because the STG actually has ever so slightly lower rate of fire, very minimally higher recoil and higher shot dispersion. So why is the STG ranked above it? Well, it honestly all comes down to the 2.6 second reload speed. You won't realistically notice the differences in things I just mentioned, but you will notice the extra half a second shaved off the reload. There will be times where you survive engagements purely because of the reload speed, let me tell you. But this weapon is truly amazing in its own right. In 15th, we actually go back to the MKB, but this time it's the sniper version, currently available in Moscow and Stalingrad for the Axis. This one has a much higher rate of fire than the standard MKB, to the same value as the STG we just spoke about, and a short dispersion value of less than half of both of them, at only 0.28, as well as reload speed of just 2.4 seconds, which is really low. And of course, it comes with an optical scope, which is actually a very good scope and should work wonders for you. But remember, you can quick tap your aim button on PC to use the standard iron sights in close quarters. 14th sees another sniper version of another assault rifle we've already talked about, the Sniper STG-44, currently only available in the Berlin campaign for the Axis. It's very similar to the Sniper MKB, but a slightly better shot dispersion, slightly better recoil direction, and slightly better recoil proper, at the cost of 0.2 seconds slower reload time, which luckily really is isn't much. But also important is that unlike the MKB sniper, you can remove your sniper STG optical scope, which I actually do. So I actually don't really remember what the optical scope looks like until I tested it out for this video. The reason I take the scope off is because I feel the iron sights are excellent for long range anyway, and arguably better for close quarters. Yet the versatility of scope versus no scope is also what puts this the highest of all German assault rifles on this list. In 13th is finally an American weapon. We haven't seen one of those since 29th. You suck, bro. <laughs> you suck, bro. I'm gonna just tell you the truth. The M2 carbine is memed a lot as just a full auto mess. It does a high level of base damage for a full auto weapon, as well as a very good 750 shots per minute, low reload time, very low shot dispersion too now after the changes, and very low recoil. It's surprisingly better than the Sniper STG and normal STG because of its much higher higher ADS speed multiplier, rate of fire, and because it has a bayonet too, meaning you can charge with it for quicker speed, and it means you get that extra 5% reduction in recoil. And just above that in my lucky number of 12th is the M2A1 carbine, a gold weapon order version of the M2 carbine. However, this was from an old edition of the Battle Pass and is no longer in store now, though it might come back. It's even quicker to fire than the M2, and has a lower reload time, has a higher ADS speed, and lower recoil direction. However, at the cost of slightly higher recoil both vertically and horizontally, which honestly you can't notice. What may surprise you about this thing is that this is actually the best western allied weapon in the entire game, meaning all weapons in the top 11 from this point onwards are either German made or Soviet made. Make of that information <laughs> what you will. In 11th, and probably another very controversial one, is the premium squad MG13 with drum magazine, what I have also rated as the second best machine gun in the entire game of Enlisted. The other one comes in later, much later. You'll see. With the standard very high 13.2 damage per hit and 660 shots per minute, you'll have no problem killing enemies. And combine this with the massive 75 round magazine that reloads in just 2.6 seconds. It's ridiculous. Then you've got the now very low shot dispersion of 0.32, one of the lowest of all machine guns. So you know you have a monster in your hands. The only issue is its recoil, as with all MGs, as it's pretty high still, especially horizontally, which is more of a problem than vertical, as we discussed 
discussed earlier. If you can get that under control and can also understand you'll have the 50% movement speed reduction, you'll still be very, very glad you have this. In 10th is the AVS automatic rifle. The biggest thing to bear in mind with this is that it starts in semi-auto mode, not full auto, and it's how your bots will use it. Yet even then, I see this as a major plus. A lot of people talk bad about this weapon, yet using it in semi-auto mode removes much of the concern the community currently have about its high recoil. 15.8 damage is absolutely insane and will always one hit down or kill enemies. And you can fire this thing like a laser still if you can click quickly in semi-auto mode. Very high ADS speed, very low shot dispersion as well make this an absolute monster. And you get a bayonet to charge with and further recoil reductions. It's just a very underrated rifle, just practice with it. In ninth place is the sniper version of the exact same weapon, which is exactly the same in every single way apart from one thing. It's minuscule shot dispersion of only 0.05 compared to the normal AVS's 0.28. And it's another one where you can remove the optical scope. I mean, the scope is good in itself, by the way. But if you do do this, then you get a normal AVS rifle just with better shot dispersion. You're probably noticing a theme here, as basically any sniper equivalent of the same weapon is the exact same as the standard version, just with better shot dispersion and a scope you may or may not be able to take off. I have no knowledge of any of this. This is so... Bizarre! Eighth place sees the mighty PPSH-41. Honestly, how can you not love this thing when looking at its stats? Super low actual recoil, high ADS speed, 71 rounds, 1150 shots per minute fire rate, and a really quick reload speed for that same magazine size. The only thing is, you'll notice its shot dispersion a little problematic at long range, but that's basically its only slight fault. And if you can aim in the general direction with this rate of fire, you'll basically be able to use the PPSH as a sniper anyway. It should also be said that the Premium Squad version, the Parkerized PPSH-41, is the exact same stats-wise, although it looks arguably cooler and has a little tiny bit better shot dispersion. So, it's just an even better version of an already amazing weapon. In 7th, we have the Kernders MG, a gold weapon from the latest edition of the Battle Pass. It's basically just a PPSH, but even better. It has 100 rounds per magazine instead of 71, higher base damage of 6.8 to 6.6, .6, higher ADS speed, and a lower shot dispersion. It even actually has lower recoil, because once you take into account the lower recoil direction of the Kernders, it actually means PPSH's recoil feels worse, albeit hardly noticeable. Its major downside, however, is the almost 5 second reload time, which can be a problem if you choose to reload at the wrong time, so be careful. We're finally at 6th, which is the Sniper FG42-2. A monstrous base damage, fire rate, reload speed, and super minimal recoil for a full auto rifle. It is an absolute beast and one of the best weapons in the game without a shadow of a doubt. The only downsides are that it has no bayonet and quite low ammo, so make sure you give soldiers equipped with this a large ammo pouch and an axe melee weapon to charge with. In fifth, we have the equally as monstrous standard version of the FG-42-2. You might be thinking, shouldn't the normal version of the FG-42-2 be in sixth, considering what we said earlier about snipers versus standard variants? Well, not this time, as both are exactly the same through the shown and hidden statistics. But the standard variant has 0.1 better ADS speed than the sniper. That is literally all. And honestly, most of this is probably due to the sniper's optical scope taking a little longer to aim with. But it is detachable, so if you take it off, which is what I would do with the sniper, it's probably very similar in this area as well. In fourth, wow, we're literally almost done, we have the legendary Soviet AVT-40. The reason it beats the mighty FG-42-2 is because it's just a little bit better in basically every single area. Better ADS speed, lower Lower recoil horizontally and lower recoil direction, whoppingly large damage, lower reload time and the presence of a bayonet. Its vertical recoil is higher, but if you pick the vertical recoil soldier perk, you'll hardly notice this at all. It's an insanely good weapon. You will love using this. But what could be better than that? In third, we have the brand new Fedorov MG, a Moscow Soviet premium squad introduced with a high caliber update, which you can learn all about in this video. This thing might be classified as a machine gun, but it's an SMG in all but name. It's by some distance the best MG in the game right now, and one of the best SMGs at the same time. It has no movement speed reduction at all. The only MG in the game that has this, which is absolutely amazing. It also has a shot dispersion statistic closer to bolt action rifles than other MGs and SMGs, 0.16, and it has the highest base damage out of all SMGs in the game. Like, there's almost no no downside to this thing, literally at all. I mean, it even looks amazing. <laughs>
Okay, it looks kind of stupid rather than amazing, but I mean, you can't knock it for that, surely. Isn't it funny? You know, when I came here 17 years ago, you all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? And in second place, it's the amazing Fedorov Automat itself. It's basically an upgrade on the Fedorov MG. It has higher fire rate, lower reload time, but arguably the best thing is the much improved ADS speed on the MG version. Yes, it does have double the shot dispersion and a tiny bit worse recoil, but you really won't notice these things, especially as they're all still very quite low. The Fedorov is absolutely fantastic. Yet what could possibly be better than every single weapon we've spoken about? about in this video so far. Well, it's due to German engineering, of course, in the gold weapon Gewehr 43 chambered for the Kurtz cartridge. This is the best weapon in the entire game, it's just no debate. It's a semi-auto rifle that almost every troop type can equip that can one-hit down or kill enemies with its above 10 base damage, with a tiny reload speed, 30 round magazine which is better than all the Fedorovs we've just spoken about, absolutely tiny recoil, a very high ADS speed, really low shot dispersion, and we still haven't even mentioned the best part, the three round burst firing mode. The rate of fire listed here does not actually include this firing mode, where every time you press the shoot button, you fire three. If you can click this button quickly, you can fire this thing at three times 480 equals 1440 shots per minute. You can shred down entire squads quicker than all weapons in the entire game, or snipe enemies from afar with tap shooting. The saddest thing about this, however, is that this weapon is no longer in the game store. Boo, yeah, I know, I know. It may come back in the future, so keep an eye out. More detail about why this weapon is absolutely amazing can be found in this video. But if you're looking for more rankings, but within specific weapon classes this time, rather than overall, then you probably want this playlist. Special thanks to my supporters, including Laszlo Berry, Akolo QE, Narflex, and Vendatrex, and you should also like the video before you quit.